Hey everybody, and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. My name is Cordell Felix, and on this video I will show you how to have a mesh follow a spline shape using the path deform modifier. This is useful for wrapping geometry around or on top of a model exactly how you want. I like to use this technique to wrap chains or ropes around something, and I use it a lot for high poly modeling for fitting other meshes closely together. I will be using 3ds Max 2013 for this technique, and this video assumes that you have a basic knowledge of modeling in 3ds Max. I'm going to be using these setups to demonstrate how to have geometry follow along a spline and also how to wrap chains around my Felixco oil barrel here by using the path deform world space modifier. For the barrel, I've used a couple helix spline shapes and used the path deform to have chains follow the spline exactly. I modeled a simple chain link and then copied that chain link over 50 times while it's still on the spline to get the long chain. These two spline shapes are what I used to get the chains to wrap around the barrel. I used a helix spline to get the basic form of the wrap and then distorted the spline by using the FFD 4x4 modifier and used the spline's vertices with, so with soft selection turned on. For this other setup, I've modeled just a random high poly mesh and will be using the same mesh to follow along its curve using a spline that I've copied from the base mesh. This is a great technique because you can take the exact same spline shape from the mesh and have something else follow the curve using the path deform modifier. Let's start by wrapping the chains around the barrel. First I need to wrap a helix spline shape around the barrel. So to model a helix I need to go to this create tab here and then go to shapes and then go to helix. So when you create the helix you're gonna click and drag and it's gonna create a circle and then you drag up and then that'll create the helix. So if you click one more time it'll give you a narrow or wider topped helix. So I want it to be about the same shape. So I'm just going to click again and it's done. So now I want to drag this over to the barrel and fit it around it. So that's a little bit too big. And I'm going to go to the modify tab and we'll mess with the radius a bit. So the bottom radius is going to be 33. I'm going to copy it over to the top, the radius too and it should fit around it pretty well. Now I want to mess with the amount of turns. Uh, you can mess with it right here. I'm going to do like two and a half turns. That seems good enough. And I'm going to distort the spline later. So now I want to get this chain mesh here to wrap, to follow the spline exactly. And I know I'm only using one, but I'm going to be duplicating it along the spline using the path default modifier. Now with the chain link selected, I'm going to be adding the path deform modifier on top of it. So if you go to the modify tab and then go to the drop down list, the path deform will be right here under the world space modifiers. So click path deform and then it's going to give you these options here. So I want it to follow this spline. So this, I'm going to pick the, plat, the path and then click the spline. And then it's going to move and stretch and stuff. So I'm just going to click move to path which will kind of fix it. And the scale is, it's kind of like a bug, I guess. I'm not really sure. I just scale it back down. Seems good enough. And it's still facing up. So you want it to follow the, the path. So I'm going to mess, I'm going to go to the X, and this doesn't seem to be right, and the Y. The Y seems like it'll work, and I'm going to move it around the Y axis. And there we go. You can see it kind of travels up there, and that just lets you know that it's correct. So now I want the chain to be going all the way up. So that means I need to duplicate it. So if I drag along this Y axis here, it's going to be moving up it. So if I just hold shift and copy and drag, it'll go up the spline no matter how many copies you put. So I'm going to do about 50. Uh, that's That'll be probably too much. I'll do 40. And it'll travel all the way up. Now we want to move the spline around so that we can get the chains to kind of be closer to each other instead of being completely evenly spaced. So there's two ways to move the spline. We can click the spline and then use the FFD modifier. So if I go to the drop down list and hit F, it'll bring me down to here. I'm going to use FFD 4x4. And then now if I hit 1, I can move these vertices around. So I'm just going to kind of bring this top part in. That's okay for now. So now I'm going to convert this to an editable spline. So convert 2 and then convert to editable spline. Now I can move these vertices around if I wanted to. So I'm going to click one and then use soft selection. Your soft selection might be closed, so if you open it and then have it turned on, I'm going to mess with the 
fall off a bit. And I think 15 is good. So I'm going to start moving these around. Okay, so that's kind of how you move the spline around to get the mesh to fall around still. You should take more time to get it just the way you want it. So now let's move on to the next part. For this setup, I'm going to have this smaller piece follow a spline along this bigger mesh's curve here. What I need to do is basically steal a spline from the edge of this bigger mesh, and then have this use the path deform modifier and then follow that spline. So what I first need to do is select that edge that I want to turn into a spline. So I'm going to go to Edible Poly because I have the Turbo Smooth modifier turned on. Then I have that edge already selected. I can choose whatever edge I want and create a spline from that, but I'm going to choose this one here. And once you have that edge selected, I'm going to right click, create shape. Now you get two shape types for the spline. There is smooth and there's linear. Smooth is basically, it, it is a nice smooth spline and linear is going to be very stepped. It's going to be the exact same shape of how the edge is now. So I'm going to go for smooth and then to select the spline, I have to click through these and then get it. If I drag it out, there it is. So now I want the shape to kind of sit on top of the model like this so that I can have the smaller piece follow it. So for the same thing as the chains, I'm going to be applying the path deform modifier. So go to this drop down list and then go to path deform and then pick the path. And it should be right there. And I'm going to move the path because it always messes it up. And I'm going to check which one it is. So I need to go to the Y and then I need to rotate it by I think 90, negative 90. There we go. And it's too big, so I need to scale it down. Okay, so again, it's on the y-axis, so I can, oh, I can drag it up and down the whole thing. So now what I want to do is I wanted to hold shift and copy it up. So I'm going to do it like 10 times, let's do 10. And I'm going to go up it like a ramp. Now this is a cool technique because I use this for other types of high poly modeling. Like say if this is a ship, I could do this with armor plating and I could wrap it all the way up around the surface. You need to be careful when using the spline because if you move it, everything else will move along with it. And if you delete it, all that path deform information is gone. It basically acts as a parent to these others. So I don't usually delete the spline, but if you needed to delete the spline and want these meshes to be in their final position, uh, you should right click the stack, the top of the stack, and do collapse 2. This is the only way to collapse the stack. You can see there that it's collapsed. If I were to go back and then right click convert to edible poly, it will only close what's underneath it. So the only way to get rid of that is to right click and do collapse 2. And you, sh you can do that with the rest, or you can attach this, then you can move them all at once, and then or even delete the spline. That's it for this quick tip. My name is Cordell Felix. And thanks again for watching 3dmotive.com.